Hey everyone, Forrest here with Rocky Mountain School of Photography, and today I wanna to take a look at what's new in Lightroom Classic with the new June 2022 update. The first thing you're gonna to need to do is be sure that you're using the newest version of Lightroom Classic. So open up that Creative Cloud application, come over here to the upper left and click Updates, and be sure that there are no pending updates for Lightroom. Now, very important, if you're using an older computer or even a newer computer with an older operating system, you might run into a place where Lightroom is unable to update to the newest version without you first either buying a new computer or updating your operating system. Now, this new update really revolves around two things, presets and local adjustments. So start. let's start by taking a look at the new preset feature. So presets are ways that we can really quickly apply multiple slider adjustments to a given photo. Think of a preset as remembering you know 20 30 40 different slider positions and with one click we can apply those sliders in that certain saved way what we can do now though is we can de-intensify or intensify the effect that that preset is having so very quickly and easily in the develop module here i'm able to go down and pick a preset i can scroll through them and i'm not going to spend a particularly long time choosing something but i think that gives a kind of a cool look to this photo and now I'm able to take this amount slider either down to t remove the effect of the preset or up to intensify the effect of the preset. Previously to now, what you had to do to do this is apply a preset and then go see what sliders it adjusted over on the right hand side and manually bring them down versus being able to do it in one fell swoop with a single slider. So this is a really cool update. And frankly, I think this should have been in Lightroom since like day one, right? Adobe Premiere Pro has had lookup table intensification and de-intensification forever. Um, I'm glad they finally brought this feature into Lightroom Classic. Now, one important addition I need to add in here is that if you are creating your own presets, you need to either enable or disable the use of this slider. So if you were say going to make a preset that you only ever wanted to be used one specific way, you could tell Lightroom to not allow this slider to be used with that given preset. So as a quick example, I could apply a certain preset and I could make some adjustments to it. Say I wanna make it make things a little bit brighter. This isn't gonna look particularly great at all, um, but I can go over here and go to this plus sign and say, create preset. And then down here at the bottom, I have the option to either support or not support the amount slider on this preset. I think most of the time you're gonna to wanna to support it because why wouldn't you wanna be able to tone back the effect of it? But there definitely could be instances where you're gonna to wanna to limit the use of that slider on the presets that you create. The other new updates we have to talk about are all focused on local adjustments. So I'm gonna go ahead and grab a different photo and take a look at those. So on an image like this, there's gonna be a lot of situations where we're gonna to wanna to do some sort of adjustment to the sky and leave the foreground alone. And contrary to that, there's probably gonna be one of the instances where we wanna adjust the foreground and leave the sky alone. And, and a great tool for that that we now have in the new version of Lightroom Classic is we can grab the local adjustment tool and I can remove here what I've done before a little bit, there we go. And I can go ahead and make a new local adjustment or a new mask as they call it by using the select sky tool. What's gonna happen is Adobe's gonna give its best bet as my sky. I can mouse over and see that it did a fantastic job. And then from there, I'm able to easily adjust what it is that this sky looks like. So I might wanna darken it a little bit. I might wanna change the hue slightly to a little bit more of a teal, and I might wanna give it a little bit of saturation. So very easy. In fact, I've already made a video on our local adjustment tools. You guys can check that out down in the description or just check out our channel page to see all of our Lightroom classic tutorials. Now, the new thing here is we're actually able to invert masks. So previously, there was a little bit of a rigmarole to do this. Now, if I want another adjustment to affect the foreground and I wanna leave this adjustment affecting the sky, what I can do is I can go to create new mask and select sky a second time. And then on this mask two that was just created, I can go to the three little dots here and say invert mask two. Now you'll also notice there's an option that says duplicate and invert, which would be a faster way to do what I just showed, but either way will do the same effect. So if we go invert mask two, now mask two is affecting my foreground while mask one is affecting my sky. And this is super powerful. Now I can click on mask two, I can come down to these sliders, and again, I have full control over what the foreground of this image looks like compared to the background. And this obviously works with select subject. It works with all of the different masking tools that Adobe gives us. So 
overall, this is a hugely, again, one of those things like I wish they'd had this since the beginning because it really makes your job a little bit easier when applying masks and local adjustments in Lightroom Classic. Now, there are a few other things that they've added in this update, uh, namely the, the third one I think that's important to note is that you can now copy and paste their AI masks between multiple photos. And what I mean by that is if you're a portrait photographer, you would be able to use the select subject tool to select the person that you took a photograph of, make a change to that, and then copy and paste that change to another photo. And instead of the way that it used to work where it would kind of apply the change to the same area of the second photo, even if the person's face moved, it will recalculate the location of the person's face in each subsequent picture. And that's gonna speed up the workflow a lot for portrait, and I'd say for landscape photographers using this exact select sky um, or select subject tool. So that can speed things up. There's also new updates for new cameras, obviously, and some other little quality of life updates like new crop overlays, and they made GPU acceleration for exporting, random things like that. However, these two things in my mind are the best of the best new features that Lightroom pushed out with this update. Now, I also wanna say down in the description, I left a link to the official release notes that Adobe put out if you wanna read a little bit more about what these things do. But the goal of today's video is just to show those of you that maybe didn't hear there was an update, go check it out, go try these new things. Um, I think both of these features are awesome and are well needed for the Lightroom Classic experience. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Hope you learned something. If you did, definitely hit that like button. If you wanna learn more from RMSP, hit the subscribe button. And if you want to stay up to date, turn on the little bell so you can get notified when we post future videos. Any questions, leave them in the comments down below. And I hope to see you in a future video. Thanks everybody.